All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchett is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touch. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Trinity Williams is suing Drusilla Davidson in the amount of $300. Ms. Williams claims Ms. Davidson walked off with a valuable gown and refused to return it. Ms. Davidson says she believed the dress was a gift and claims Ms. Williams is just upset that she won a pageant they were both competing in. All rise. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Hatchett presiding. All parties have been sworn in, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Officer. You may be seated. All right, Trinity and Drusilla, mm -hmm. you all have a problem here. Mm -hmm. And you are suing the defendant for $300 because you say she stole this dress. I am. I am suing the defendant. So how do you all know each other? Let's start from the very top, because this is more complicated than just this dress. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that is a complicated dress. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, complicated few... dress or complicated situation? Mm -hmm. The dress is, with its complicated stitching, is but an outward reflection of a complicated relationship, oh. which began <laughs> <laughs> at a pageant in Seattle, Washington, where I was competing. Regularly, as I do compete in many drag pageants, I keep to myself, I stay professional, but I saw a diamond in the rough in Miss Drusilla and someone that I could really connect with. So I struck up a conversation, we talked, we got dinner, and I felt that I had found a companion in this otherwise pretty chilly drag community. So we Pretty chilly drag community. Mm -hmm. So this is a drag queen competition. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And you're in Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington. You had not seen her before. No, we had never and met. And you said, mm, this is a, as you said, a diamond in the raw. Yes. I could take her under my beautiful wingspan. And do what? And teach her some of the ways of being a drag queen. She was so talented and so beautiful and I felt that, you know, I could really trust this person and, and bring them into my drag family. So So now you meet Trinity and tell me from your perspective about this initial meeting. Well I was I was wanting to get into the community. I was constantly inspired by these queens that I saw. I wanted to emulate that. I wanted to become what they were. And I noticed Trinity right out of the pack such an amazing queen so I wanted to pick her brain I wanted to understand what her perspective was so I took her out to dinner I paid for the dinner I made sure that she was comfortable and that she we were that we were fostering a really beautiful relationship so after the Seattle encounter tell me what happened the relationship continued to be positive mm -hmm. yes after our dinner which <laughs> I will point out to your honor was at Burger King so not a huge expense. <laughs> so sweet. Okay. Um, so after the Seattle encounter, I came back here to Los Angeles to prepare for another pageant in Portland. And we were corresponding, me and the defendant, over social media and talking. And I was giving her some advice and kind of pruning her. And she had expressed interest in the gown that I had been wearing at the Seattle pageant. And I said, mm -hmm. well, you know, here's a new queen that I can give some of my old dresses. So I brought to Portland a box of old expensive gowns that didn't fit me anymore, or that I had worn too many times to give to Drusilla. That was a very wonderful gesture. Mm -hmm. So did Trinity bring this box of gowns to yes, give to did. you? Yes, she did. And what happened? Well, you know, it's part of the community to pass on knowledge and physical items from drag mother to drag daughter, as one does. And she brings this beautiful box of all of her garments that she wanted to pass on. And she... Oh, that was really very kind and very was. generous. Yes, it yes. was. I really appreciated it. And part of the pageant that she was competing in included her bringing along this dress. And I thought it was part of the things she wanted to pass on. 
Oh, so that's where the complication mm -hmm. comes in. See, she says complication, but I made it clear that the box of dresses on the floor were the dresses that I was giving to her. Now, on my personal rack, I had this fabulous gown here. We can see. Very expensive, mm -hmm. very intricate, beautiful gown mm -hmm. that I had on my personal rack. Now, when I went to touch up my makeup in my personal dressing area, I came back and not only was the box of dresses gone, but so was this one. Drusilla, nowhere to be found. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. And when I reached out to Miss Drusilla and asked if maybe she had accidentally misinterpreted what I was saying and took the dress, she did not respond. And later... I mean, do people come to see the decorations? Uh, yes, and um, recent, um, this year we were featured in the local paper as well. Oh, so that really has generated more traffic. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Trinity Williams, who is suing Drusilla Davidson for property loss. Oh, maybe I left it. I didn't want to assume the worst because we had ha been having such a positive relationship. Yes. So when I went back to Los Angeles and realized that the dress still wasn't there, and when I reached out to Miss Drusilla and asked if maybe she had accidentally misinterpreted what I was saying and took the dress, she did not respond. Which was curious because we had been very cordial over social media in the interim between the first two pageants. So I thought maybe she's keeping something. And then when she showed up to the pageant in Hollywood, she wore... No, come on. The dress. She wore this dress. She wore this All dress, right. Your Honor. All right, Jacilla, come on. Mm -hmm. She is so wonderful <clears throat> to give you this box of, I would think, expensive gowns mm -hmm. that was a generous gift. I mean, can we agree on that? Absolutely. 100%. Your and Honor. this dress was not in the box. But, Your Honor, would you, put, would you fold up this dress and put it in a box, or would you proudly put it on display on a rack? Well, if I was planning to give it to mm -hmm. some people. Which, that's what I, I interpreted. Well, well, listen mm -hmm. to me. If I was planning to give it to someone, I wouldn't have it on the rack. I would have it neatly folded in the box mm -hmm. with the other pieces. So this is on the rack separate from the box that she's giving you. And then you take this dress and the dress that's in the box, and you leave, and then she says she reaches out to you. My and you didn't respond. Mm -hmm. My thought process at the time was, I met Trinity in this dress. I thought it was this exchange of a precious item to another. I thought it was symbolic in a way that she was... Let me have some tea behind this, because this is going nowhere. Go ahead. Mm. And I will point out to your honor that thoughts are not facts. But I thought oh. that this dress was important enough to say, I'm passing it along to my drag daughter. And so I took the dress. And I was MIA, but it was only because I was in competitor mode because I was there at the next pageant in Hollywood to win. Which is curious because between <laughs> the first two pageants, we were very chatty over social media. So are you to say that, that pageants in Portland don't require you to be as galvanized as pageants in Hollywood? Do you only take certain regional pageants to be worthy of your time or were you keeping something from me? I was only keeping my focus, Your Honor. You know what? I don't buy it. Focus on my dress. I do not buy that for a second. Here she is being enormously generous. Mm -hmm. We're talking how many dresses? Six. Oh, my goodness. Custom. Rhinestone. Dresses that she gave you. They were in a box. Mm -hmm. Packed for you to take. This was on a rack. You then take this dress as well, and then all of a sudden you're in competition mode and you just simply can't even return a phone call or a text message after she's been so generous to you? Why would you do that? It's true, Your Honor. I should have reached out because this person quickly meant so much to me. Exactly! Mm -hmm. So now, not only do you take the dress, you show up at the pageant in the dress. And what happened, Trinity, when she shows up in the dress? Well, I was flabbergasted, and I tried to speak with her, but she was very curt in competition mode, I guess. And then she ended up winning the $1,000 prize. Gisela, you owe her an apology. 
because clearly there seems to be this code of honor mm -hmm. among drag queens that they look out for each other. And she was generous enough to give you not one, not two, not three, but six dresses that she neatly packed away. And then you decided that you saw this one on the rack and you took it without telling her. And then you refused to respond to her when she reached out to you. That's just wrong. Wrong, wrong, and very, very messy. So not only are you going to give her the $300 I'm going to order, you're going to pack up all six of those dresses plus this dress, and you have exactly five business days to make sure that they are shipped to her, return receipt requested so we can track it, and she is going to get every one of those dresses back. Do you understand? I do. And do you understand that you owe her an apology? I do. Well, give it to her. Trinity, I'm sorry, and I wouldn't be the drag queen I am without you, and I hope our friendship can come back from this. Oh, that's about as sincere as this desk. I hope you learned a lesson here. You're going to get all seven of the dresses back, plus, as a matter of principle, $300. You know, I don't you. know if you would have won the pageant or not, but she got $1,000, so you ought to get the $300 back. Thank I'm you, so Honor. entering the judgment for $300 with the understanding that you got to treat people right. Because what goes around comes around. And, you know, I believe that karma has a long, long memory. Nothing further. We'll stand adjourned. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $300. I know I was wrong, Trinity, and I'm sorry I took your dress. It's all right. I understand. I hope you learned your lesson, and I'm going to let you keep the dresses. Coming up. This goes on for the whole month of December until about a week into January. I have a house. I just want to sleep and relax, get some a good rest for my work and my life. Bill Edwards is suing Dwight Foreman in the amount of $1,444. Mr. Edwards claims his neighbor's excessive Christmas decorations are a nuisance and says he can't even access his driveway because of the crowds. Mr. Foreman claims he turns off the decorations before it gets too late and says everyone in the neighborhood loves them. All right, Mr. Edwards, I understand that you are here suing your neighbor for $1,444, is that correct? That is correct. And that you're saying that his Christmas decorations created a nuisance for you in your neighborhood. So start at the beginning, tell me what happened. Every year it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's getting to the point where the light is permeating through my house. So when you say bigger and bigger and bigger, you mean more and more Christmas decorations? It is becoming elaborate. He has choir groups show up, Christmas caroling. He has a singing reindeer out there. I have a, a picture of that. Of okay, I'd like to see that. So Mr. Foreman, what's going on in the neighborhood? And why is it necessary for uh, your neighbor to be in here suing you today? Oh my. Uh, I moved into uh, my built, my uh, house at uh, about five years ago right. and uh, we started with some modest decorations but it became a tradition in our family to uh, add more decorations every year and um, as you can see we've uh, I mean this is pretty elaborate this yes. is really elaborate we, I mean you've we, got decorations everywhere we really love Christmas in, oh clearly yes clearly my, but it seems like it's become almost an attraction I mean do people come to see the decorations uh, yes and um, recent um, this year we were featured in the local paper as well oh so that really has generated more traffic yes and it's just great to see all the joy that uh, my decorations give to everyone coming up this goes on for the whole month of December until about a week into the January I have a house. I just want to sleep and relax, get some good rest for my work and my life. The verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Bill Edwards, who is suing Dwight Foreman for private nuisance. So, Bill, what's the problem? I work a lot of unusual shifts, so when I'm trying to get home at 5 o'clock maybe that day... Uh, so I, 5 o'clock in the afternoon or 5 o'clock in the morning? What it could be either or. I work at, okay. I'm a restaurant manager, okay. and so right. my inventory stocks... I could be at a lot of different times. Um, and it just has grown. Sometimes uh, there was even one day where I couldn't even. I looked down the street. I'm not even getting down the street 
I decided to go stay at a hotel room. And this goes on for the whole month of December until about a week into the January. So that's about 10% of the year I'm fighting. I have a house. I just want to sleep and relax, get some a good rest from my work and my life. So, Mr. Tega, you're here. What do you know about this situation? Come and join us, please. So are you, uh, do you live in this neighborhood? Yes, I moved in about two years ago. And I was walking my dogs and I met Mr. Dwight. All right. And he invited me to the Christmas party, to the holiday Christmas party. So I started going to his parties and we started gathering the children at school. And during the school breaks, we gather up and have Christmas carols at his house. Dwight, did you invite Bill to the Christmas party? Uh, yes, actually, Your Honor, I did uh, this year, but he told me uh, he was unable to attend because he had work the next day, and then I find out uh, the next day he didn't go to work until late, later in the evening. So is it that you just didn't want to be bothered with the party? I mean, honestly. The holidays mean something a little bit different for me, so... So how so? How does it... What's different? Uh, a couple years, about six years ago, before they moved in, uh, I, my wife had moved out with my daughter. So it's, mm -hmm. I take the shifts, so no one else to take the shifts at the restaurant, and I work them. And so. So holidays are hard for you. Holidays are hard, and I try to just go through with my work. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. Can we get a little bit more cooperation between the two of you? Would it help maybe if we turn the decorations off, like at nine? Well, uh, I 9 30? think maybe 9.30. 9.30? 9.30 would, would that be. help? <laughs> that will really help. Do you too. need some blinders, you know, the things that you put on your... Oh, you've seen the picture of his house. At 9.30 or if we can work something out where weekends are maybe d different than the weekdays. Oh, that's a great idea. Maybe 9 on weekdays so let's and do 10 on 9 weekends. on the weekdays and 10 on the weekends. Is that great? That sounds good. I say, y'all should have been able to work this out without coming into my courtroom. But now that you're here, let's figure this out. So 10 o'clock, right? Weekends, 9 o'clock during the week. There's nothing further. The plaintiff's claim for $1,444 is denied. But I think that we leave here in a much better place than you came in, yes. right? Thank you, That's Josh. always my goal, for people to leave out of here in better shape than they came. Nothing further will stand adjourned. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. I'm glad we were able to work out a solution. We're neighbors. And I hope you can learn to appreciate the holidays from now on, and you're more than welcome to attend the festivities next year.